what I would have done. Bro, no one cares what you would have done. Actually, everyone cares. Welcome to Let Me Book the Territory, the podcast made for smart marks and nostalgia nerds. Brought to you by the Embrace the Turn Up Podcast Network. And now your hosts, A-Dub. E-B-A. E-Ray and J-Mo. Well, ladies, gentlemen, Boys and girls, children of all ages, maybe not all ages, maybe a little bit older, probably in your teens to yes. 14. Oh, yes. You know where I'm going here. <laughs> Welcome to one of the greatest wrestling podcasts of all time. It is Let Me Book the Territory. I am E-Ray, the quasi bad guy, the Diet Coke of evil, the American Cream Brody Loads, Roman Gains your tribal beef, and of course, Macho Man Vandal Savage. Yeah, in the building, and I'm joined by again, you know, the guy. Well, it's the dub <laughs> show, <laughs> it's the big bad dub show tonight, yo. Mm. Yes, your boy, the pod god, a dub is in the building. Uh, we back. This is not a two-man power trip anymore. This is the super mega awesome powers eroding. And we're just going to erode all this wrestling greatness all over your pods. Yeah. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. e how you feeling, brother? I'm feeling great. I got a nice drink. I'm feeling very zesty. And I'm ready to talk about some wrestling. Of course. Zesty? That's where you're uh, at? It's, it's the drink. It's like, I don't know. Zest. Oh, okay. Got that drink in my cup. Kirk Bangs action? No, I don't like him. <laughs> no? You, oh, you wasn't a fan? No, nah, that was... You only had like two know. songs. That's why. I, I, I could see the future. I was like, this guy is not going to make it. Like, I, I could tell. It's like, <laughs> if you're a big fan of Kid Ink, like, yo, he got it. Nope, he don't. <laughs> he had like a mixtape. He had a mixtape and, and like two big singles. He had like he had like three albums. Yeah. Do you know any of the B-sides? It, it would... No. And one with one with Chris. All Brown. the songs I know are with Chris Brown. <laughs> he still has one of the greatest songs Kid ever, of had, like uh, two thousand what twelve. Kit Inc. had the career that Youngberg was supposed to have before Youngberg got beat up in Detroit. I mean, and fortunately for him, he did get beat up in Detroit because that launched the hitmaker persona. And you know, sometimes you need a change of pace to be great. You see where I'm going there? Sometimes you just, you just, yeah, I, I see where you're going. I, I like right. that. I like that. What I, I like that. I mean, I like what that. I will say, though, uh, this change of persona is not going to be one that I like from the likes of <sighs> Tommaso Ciampa. Mm. Not feeling that, bro. Nah, you're no, you're not feeling it? Any type. When I see it. him next it. to the Miz, it just makes me feel weird. It's like, this is stupid. I don't know. I feel like a child. This is dumb. I'm out. So they did a good job of like explaining it when they had Champa kind of cut his promo. But I'm just like, I, there's just something that's just not connecting there. Like he's still out there in the full jacket and his wrestling gear at all times. Even when Miz is in a suit, it just feels, feels weird. Wrong. No way the Miz <laughs> and Tommaso Champa are ever like in the same group or alignment or at least not at that mercy it's like uh how i would see it it would have to definitely be something of the Sami Zayn trying to be in the tribal chief type deal 
but they got it the opposite. It's kind of like if Roman Reigns or the Usos are trying to be on Sami Zayn's squad. And I'm like, I don't like right. that. Feels weird. But you, the, the ironic part about it is like their stories are kind of similar in different ways. Like neither one of them was supposed to be there for different reasons. Miz because everybody hated him and like not in a kayfabe way, in a real life way. And Tommaso Ciampa because he doesn't fit their mold and he's in his 50s, 60s, 70s, however old he is. You know, him and I, I was gonna Bobby ask. Fish had the first wrestling I was match say, ever. Who's older? Him or Bobby? Oh, definitely Bobby Fish. That's true. Bobby Fish probably trained Tommaso Ciampa. I don't know because Tommaso, Before they Tommaso had video Ciampa cameras. literally worked his ass off. Like, he, he doesn't have an ass. It's just like hamstrings, more hamstrings, back. Because he, he's just <laughs> super jacked for no reason everywhere. I was like, this guy, he's insane, but I love it. But I don't love the alignment with the Miz. But um, Raw was Raw, you know. I, well, I don't, I guess it was. It was, it was a it tough was, Raw. It was there. <laughs> I was like, okay. It was, again, it's, Raw continues to be an okay to bad watch. Mm-hmm. SmackDown's a bad yeah, watch. SmackDown's not even getting my attention. I don't turn. I don't even think about SmackDown. Like, nope. I watch like the highlights on YouTube at this point. Like, truthfully, the best thing on SmackDown right now is Theory. Which I just, I'm telling you, this kid got something, man. He he's got that it factor. I don't know. I don't know when you can put the big belt on him, given like who's at the top of the card. But but it would. Definitely change things up. I'll okay, tell you well, that. He, main, main event. Well, let's talk about sure. it. Um, theory. I hate that. I just hate that they can't have his whole name. It's so dumb. Even his shirt yeah. pissed me off. I was like, Theory. They said Theory so many times. You know, the only people, excuse me, the only person's name that they said more than Theory was McDonough. And I was like, this is driving me fucking crazy. <laughs> Here comes McDonough. McDonough said, oh, McDonough. I was like, oh, God. And then they tried to, like, define his last name. I'm like, I don't need all of this, guys. We know who he they is. They could just call him JD. It'd be so much easier. McDonough. <laughs> I was like, McDonough. McDonough. Yeah, it's driving me crazy. That's definitely going to be his name in, like, Have three you weeks. had your break then today, drop the JD. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> mm, crispy lettuce and bacon McDonough whatever um, pretty soon pretty soon it's going to be McDonough versus Breaker oh versus Theory the WWE names are just going to be this one big mad <laughs> lip of just words right mad gap or some shit um, but yeah Theory being I don't know it's it's something about that that look of Theory he's he's good he's, he's really good on the mic he has something there with like the heat that he gets. It's like say, say it one more time. Say what one more time, idiots! I was like, oh, just so so great. It's like don't get intimidated by it. We did see somebody else get a little caught up by the the what chance earlier as well, but we'll get to that. Um, I I I, I don't know. I want to say Bobby Lashley now having the the Dipset title. Does he go back to that? Does he inject himself and in Brock? versus Roman, which it sounds like he kind of wink, wink, wants to do kayfabe. Uh, or what? But he also has, like, what, now he has a match with who? No, he has he has Lashley at SummerSlam. He's made it known that he's going to cash in, but for some reason, Dolph Ziggler keeps yeah, popping up and kicking yeah, him yeah, in the Yeah, yeah, that's job. what it was. I like Dolph Ziggler. Give Dolph Ziggler the, the, the money in the bank. Just take oh, it. Oh, cute. Just let him take it. We're all huge Dolph Ziggler fans. Ziggler yeah. only needs to change his uh, his main move because Zigzag, I get it. You can hit it on anybody, but it just doesn't have enough for him to be in that main picture again. That's why he'll never win the title. Change your move, bro. Change your move, or you're not getting a, you're not getting another chance at that main belt. What would you give him as a finisher? question it would have to be like a just of the move of the move set in your lexicon uh, what did you get for it because of Dolph always having to face like people that are bigger than him because he just sells so good it would have to be something like a jumping knee strike or 
something that you can pull off on anybody. Again, like the zigzag, but it's better than the zigzag. But I, the zigzag is just so goofy. I can't take it seriously. Maybe if he took the code breaker, I'd be fine with that. Uh, something of that nature. Like it got to just be something good because Dolph make everything look good. I would love to see him do like a power bomb of some sort, but you just can't get that off on everybody. And they love putting him against like way bigger competition. So that that's what I would I would go in the route like a I don't know a, a jumping knee or even the. Um, Adam Cole type deal, like pull pull the something oh. down, just hit him in the back of the head. The shine a wizard, yeah, the so, back of the something head. like that Not that you can that. do. Because again, they pretty much had the same move set, so I'd be okay yeah. with that. I think I would give him Shelton's finisher, the pay dirt that jump. I do like liner. that too. Yes, because it's it takes advantage of his athleticism, which is very close to Shelton's. It's something you can hit out of nowhere on. Most guys, you know, I can't see him, you know, getting it off on Veer or mm-hmm. Brock, but but kind of, you know, yeah, like you know, if he gets Brock down, you know, Brock's kind of on a knee, you know, boom, hits him with that. I think that works better for Ziggler than even the zigzag, because yeah. the zigzag just kind of looks like a sling blade, yeah, just without the running from the yeah. ropes part. So when Seth and Finn started showing up and people just started doing sling blades. You were like, okay. oh, the zigzag isn't that cool anymore. I mean, was the zigzag uh, ever cool, though? Let's, let's be real. The zigzag. Come on. No. Maybe, maybe it's the name. No, it's it's all is it of the it. the name? But the, the zigzag, the name is probably the least <laughs> egregious thing about it. I just do not enjoy it. Um, like you said, I would like to see that, that pay dirt type move. That would be pretty dope. And I think the way he jumps and sails it, it would really be fun to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, call I don't know, call it Dirt Ziggler or some I don't know. That that's uh, good, uh, right? you, uh, you got something. I, I do this, man. I do this. Yeah, and that that's one of those cool moves where like he could do it, but then like if he sold like you know the injury from the match so much. A guy's arm could just be laying on top of him, and he could still lose the match, and that's a whole nother story. Damn it. Damn it! I'm so good at higher this. or something. You know, We're so we... good at this. Uh, yeah. Um. So you know what? We brought up theory. Are theory and Ricky Starks at about the same level of? You can pull the trigger and it's gonna work. Um. You you're not gonna like my answer. Oh, I'm okay. gonna say no. Oh. I'm okay. not in love with um Starks like everybody else is. I see the potential, but I really? don't think he's there. Like, he, he has something that needs to be cultivated. Similar to Flex Cavana. That's what he reminds me of. It's like, he's he's there, but he's not where everybody else is projecting him to be thus far. So, I don't think he has it. Like, as far as like, oh, he's unmissable talent. But I think he, he is... Oh, I think he's a can't-miss guy. I don't see it. I mean, I, uh, no, I mean, I, so, I, I guess, let me rephrase. <clears throat> okay. Rewind. Uh, I don't think that he is off the charts Swerve Scott yet. He's not that for me. But he is definitely like, oh, there's something to him. Versus Theory, I see it. I'm like, oh, Theory's been that guy. So as I seen him in, uh, was it FCW or whatever the shit was, uh, Evolve. Evolve. I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, that guy, he's awesome. I, I really enjoy him. Like yeah. the presentation, Austin awesome Theory, it was great. Uh, Starks is like, ah, I don't really like the little uh, Moonwalker kick out leg move. Uh, it don't do it for me. Uh, he has some cool things that he can do in the ring. I, I really don't like the tights because he seems a little small for that. It just looks mm-hmm. a little weird to me as well. Uh, and I, it's like, I, I want more from him. So. He on the mic, he's he's pretty good, undeniably. In the ring, he's pretty good. But it's like nothing is jumping off the screen for me. But I again, I think it's because we're enamored with him because it's him on a page with a bunch of Steves. So a, amongst a sea of Steves. You're gonna see a you're gonna a see a, a, a minnow, a goldfish, or something else. Cause 
it's fucking bland as biscuits over there. So I get it. Well, it's a, it's a bunch of Steve's. So you, when you see a Sean, they stand out. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think, so I actually think Starks has more potential than Swerve. What? I think if they get it right with Starks, you're, you're talking 98 rock type stuff. But there are two things holding him back right now. One is that FTW title. Because it doesn't mean anything to anybody. He Apparently, he's the longest reigning champion with it. Who knew? Because there's only been the four. The FTW but... title is the BMF title in UFC. It's like, why is this shit here? Like, why? <laughs> the F motherfucker title. Yeah. yeah. No. Get that shit out of here. The other thing holding Ricky Starks back, believe it or not, is Powerhouse House. Oh, I thought you were going to say Taz. Oh. I mean that that whole thing, that whole thing, but like, and that's not saying like Hobbs is a bad wrestler or Ricky's carrying him. It's just that Ricky is a solo star, so for them to be a tag team does nothing. It makes Hobbs look great. It does nothing for Ricky's star. Mm. So like, if they were just to make them two solo stars, but have the emphasis be on Hobbs just being Ricky's big, like it would work. Yes. Ricky's heavy, if you yes. will. The like, presentation. Think about when, when Big E, yeah. Think about when Big E was next to Ziggler. They might have tagged together twice. Other than that, Big E was just right there, like, nah. If you want to get to Ziggler, you got to go through me first. And what you're not going to do is go through me, because I'm Big E Langston. I still have a last name right now. <laughs> yeah, it, if, like, it's very much like the presentation of Christian Cage and Evil Luchasaurus. Oh, we gotta talk about it. that. Oh my god! But that is, uh, but that is wait. in essence what you mean, like, because yes. they technically yes. aren't a tag team. It's like, hey, I'm Christian Cage, but if you want me and I'm talking all this shit, go through this guy over here. You you forgot that guy right behind you, and you're like, oh, you gotta go through yeah, my dinosaur. Look up, like, yeah. And and again, sorry, gotta reference him, my boy. Shout out to Papa Dobek. Never lose your dinosaur. That's what I'm talking. <laughs> but yeah like it, it's always that thing of like yo this is my heavy like he just handles my light work and you my light work now if you get past him guess what I can go and that presentation whenever you do it the guy behind the heavy has to be able to go at an extremely high level or it doesn't work which which is why like smartly they've never actually done that presentation with Miz because it doesn't work because as much as people like Miz, they don't characterize him as a guy that can just go. So, like, and you can't do it with a chicken shit heel who that's just their main thing. And that's always their thing, even when they're winning matches. It's got to be a guy like a Ricky, like a Cole, shit, like a Daniel Bryan. Like a Daniel he could have Bryan. a heavy if you I mean, really he want it. Yeah, with Kane, technically. Um, yeah, it's the same with Seth Rollins, sort of. But. Uh, it's a it's a lot of the guys that's like they're chicken shit, but they can go. And I mean, even Christian Cage, it works there. Ricky Starks, I think that would work better. And they they were kind of doing that, but for whatever reason, they kind of changed it up. And I think it's because of Keith Lee, because Keith Lee came and it's like everybody just likes seeing them squared up together, and it just made good sense. And then you also seen um, Swerve in there, and it's like oh him and Swerve, that's a good mix up and it's like I love that but to your point he should they should be kind of doing other things they should not be challenging for the tag team belts Ricky Stark should just be walking around like a loner like look I'm I'm looking for the belts I'm, I'm maybe I want that trans union Atlantic Western Union uh money gram title and then that's the yeah and then on. that's when you go and powerhouse Hobbs it just sits there in the back and maybe powerhouse Powerhouse Hop should be fighting every other big dude on that roster. Like, he should be out here like, yo, I don't give a fuck who the rest of y'all are. I was here day one. I'm fighting all these big horses. And then you can lead him right into a program with Wardlow. Yeah. Like, yeah, I beat all the other big horses here. Hey, Wardlow, I'm going to beat your ass too and take that TNT. But would... whether, you, whether you take it off of Wardlow or not, that's the gr- great program for Powerhouse Hobbs. And then in the meantime, in between time, He's beating up people for Ricky Starks too. And so it, I think that's work. a little too much double duty for Hobbs. You got to do one or the other. 
and I'm fine with either or, but not both. Yo, it's E-Ray, the quasi-bad guy, the Diet Coke of evil, the side god of pod, and I'm here to tell y'all, come check out my show, Binge Flicks and Chill. You never know what you're going to get, but we always talking some good shit when it comes to television and the latest movies. So we want to bring y'all in. We want to make sure you have a good time. You learn something, you laugh, you cry. You might stab a nigga or two. I don't know what you're going to get, but that shit is popping. So come check out Binge Flicks and Chill. And it's me, E-Ray, and I'm out. At the same time, that's when you kind of muddy it up. And that's A.W. way. Just muddy and weird and confusing. No, no, but you, you slow play it with Hobbs. You, you, you strapped a rocket to Ricky, but you slow play it with Hobbs. Hobbs has a match maybe once every two weeks. But it's obviously, it's against a okay. big dude. And then at some point, it could be six months, maybe even a year down the line. Hobbs gets a world, okay. you know, some type of title shot on whatever guy has a big belt. But my point is, like, they both need to be doing singles things. Like, you can slow play Hobbs' stuff while you strap the rocket okay. to Ricky. I'm okay with that. Like, you could, like, be doing things with Ricky and then forget Hobbs even had matches. You can put him on Dark or some shit or, you know, the Dark <laughs> Web or wherever the fuck they show their other stuff. The 4chan. Yeah, that's where they're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Hacking Hunter Biden's hey. uh, email in iCloud and then... You get to watch uh, Powerhouse Hobbs kill somebody like uh, Tony Nese. AEW Grayscale <laughs> on the 4chan. Hosted by right. Hunter kill Biden. Tony Nese. Next. All right. Well. All commentary. Anonymous <laughs> and JR. Well, well by, by golly. By, by goddamn. Uh, 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 anonymous? Did you get some of my barbecue sauce? Oh, no. The federal government is out to get us all, JR. Yeah, I, I'm like, and so is Andrade. I, I, wait, well, <laughs> this is the type of content you don't get on our Google. <laughs> like, yep, nope, no thank you. Google is the yeah, enemy. They, They're watching. Exactly. Them. Anonymous. Nope, just scrambled. <laughs> Why is everything scrambled here? Everybody in the audience is scrambled. <laughs> <laughs> It's Miro. He's an agent of Google. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think Miro is. I mean, we're we're already here now. We're talking about uh, Rampage. Uh, what was that? Fighter Fest two point seven. The whole Fighter Fight Fest. Fight for fifth, like, Fight for five year foreign. I don't know. Whatever that <laughs> shit is. It was great. Fight for five year foreign. <laughs> That shit was amazing. It was good though because oh. right here yeah. you got to hit him with the drill. Like, it's about to slide on you. Like, oh shit! Because I Miro came out. So let's talk about um, Fighter Fest for the Fallen Favio. Uh, there was a there was a point where Darby Allen got murdered by Brody King. Is it yeah, is it yeah. news? Because this happens every week. But in essence, it was to draw out. Is Darby just a Steve that like has a name? Uh, I mean, he's a dark Steve, which I love. I love dark Steves. You <laughs> like emo Steve. Those are cool. AEW just has like a bunch of Steves that have names. The Varsity Blondes, Steves. Steves. <laughs> the Dark Order, Steves. One Steve wears a adjacent. mask. One has a catch, a good catchphrase. They just, they're just guys that hey, are there. John to get Silver's beat, but there. Kind of know their names. I like John Silver. He's not a Steve. I like John Silver too, but he he, he he jumps off the page. Yeah. Everyone else, I don't know your name. If I don't know your name, you're a Steve. He's a Stefan. I'm okay with that. Curry just won the title, you know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But regardless, and, and, you know, uh, Stefan or Krill, there's plenty of great Stefans, so I'm okay with that. But what I am going to say is the whole Darby Allen, Brody King massacre to. To draw a sting. My question to you: We've set this trend. When you get missed, it you get evil. We seen it. We seen it mm. with uh, the heart girl, whatever her name is, uh, Julia, Julia. Stevet. I don't know. See, I don't even know her name. Whatever. <laughs> Vagina Steve. <laughs> yep, we seen her. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we seen Vagina Steve uh, get missed it, and then she became evil. We seen uh, 
uh pop he got he got missed it he turned he turned uh dark pox with like oh i'm missing the eyeball but i'll never let you fight me you fight my friends and then he went crazy and it was great and they was like evil each evil uh death triangle or some shit so that was great sting got missed it does he become house of sting does House he get Sting. even more uh, emo? Uh, uh, and do what? Just more standing? Yes. Quieter. <laughs> and then he just swoops himself a bang. And he's just like, he starts like Fallout Boy starts playing instead. And he's like, <laughs> Oh, that beautiful singer. What a beautiful death um, drop. Yeah, no, no, none of that. Not not mad at that. I would love it. I'd pop for that. I'm not not mad at that. But he has to do the bang. Yes. Oh my god, it's emo sting. It was surfer sting, is is crow sting, emo sting. No, uh, no, you, you forgot about Joker sting. Ugh, I tried to forget about that. I did not enjoy that. That was Yeah, that, that was, was a moment. That was definitely another yeah, rough crotch. Rough crotch, what? <laughs> I said rough watch. I mean, I don't know. It might have been that too. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but but emo sting has to change his theme song to Uma Thurman by Fall Out Boy. Yeah, though. I'm, I'm okay with that, or you know, Panic at the Disco, whatever. I'm okay with any of those things. But or I write songs, not yeah. tragedies. No tragedies, not love songs. Miro yeah. came out. I fought to save him, but he just sat there, and apparently. He had on Google glasses, so maybe he is a part of Google, and they are a part of the enemy. Because, yeah, I told you, <laughs> anonymous. anonymous. Thank you, anonymous. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Miro it works for Google. He's got Google glasses on, and one of his eyes looked like it was like closed, or he had a a patch on it. That's why he came out the glasses. Apparently, but I was like. What was that even? I don't like that. I was like, first of all, I don't like Miro coming out with glasses. That was stupid. If you gotta like hide his eye, I guess. But well, do you remember the the promo he cut no. last week? Maybe I didn't watch. So it. in the promo he cut, uh, okay, fight there you for go. the Fabios. I didn't remember because it. It, yeah, fight for the Fabios night one, mm-hmm. one or might have been seventeen. Or was this um, dynamite? Miro cut one of his. Oh, okay, yes. wait, or rampage. I don't know. Because I didn't know. see where I seen Dynamite. Some, I seen Fight for the Five Year One. At some point, Miro, I didn't see Fight for the Five At some Fabio point 19. before all right. Rampage. At some point before Darby died okay. in the ring, Miro cut a promo. No, another one of his, hey, I'm talking to you God oh, promos. Sweet. And he talked about like, on oh, you sent your pagans in the house of black after me. But did you send them to punish me or recruit oh. me? And then the promo cuts out. And you're like, oh, that's not nothing. That's not nothing. Percolating. So, like, so when he came out and I saw it, I was like, are they about to really turn Miro House that of Black? That would be emo. Because emo if so, Miro? I'm all fucking in. I don't know if I'm in on it. I don't want to see Miro in, like, black leather. But I do. I, I don't like it. But I want him. I think I, I think I'm in on it just to see like how they present like, it. Because I already seen Gamer Miro, I didn't like it. Best Man Miro, weak. Oh, Gamer Miro was yeah, so bad. But, I mean, he was great, but it was just stupid presentation. No, wise. yeah, no. Miro's yeah, always he can't lose. Miro's always great. Yeah, presentation. Cut Miro yeah. was like, oh, man, great. <laughs> Still love this guy. He can't lose. Give him anything, and I'm just like, this dude's great. You're like, you're like, look at right. him. He's a cuck. I'm like, but did you see that spinning right. heel kick though? Like, like, holy shit! You 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 don't satisfy his wife. Guess what he's gonna do? Spinning heel kick and break your back. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. Is my wife not satisfied? His wife's back. He right. breaks yours. God, God, did you not satisfy my wife? What? What are you talking? Ah, 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 ah. Just break your bones. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I need um, Miro. <laughs> To not join House of Black or to not join Darby. I just need him to start kicking ass. Him and Brody King. Oh, that would be amazing. That would be so That's a match fun. right there. And that's all I want. Like, because these guys are names. Him and Malachi. That's, that's what I'm saying. But, match. you know, you got to work your way up through the ranks. 
Him and Buddy. That's a... Oh, oh. You want to talk about two guys that can just oh. go? Man, oh. sign me up. And, you know, um, speaking of Brody, I don't... Maybe he's been missing because uh, he's got a new new main squeeze. You mean Buddy? Yeah, Buddy. You My said bad. Brody. Buddy. I, I got too yeah, excited. I mean... Bro- Brody's great, <laughs> but Buddy... He's he's got it, buddy. Yeah, buddy's yeah, he's, that guy. He's definitely the guy. Buddy's that him guy. Him and uh, seems like I, two people are mysteriously injured at the same time. Hmm. hmm go uh, figure. Hmm. Look, man. If, if I had her, it'd be hard to get yeah, me off the house damn too. Right. The matches they putting <laughs> on, it's crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> the pitting oh, combination. The hurricane, the hurricane Ronas. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to go like that. <laughs> oh man, it just keeps spinning around. Right. <laughs> yep, that's the point. That's the point. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Good stuff. What a pinning combination. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I would love to see him go against each piece of the House of Black. Maybe win, maybe lose. I don't know, but it would be great. Yeah, it, okay. it's just. Who, Great who, wrestling, who but for story wise, I think I would need I want to see it go somewhere. So that's the only hard part. I don't want to see him join the House of Black necessarily. Cause that that fucking horn coming on that gets me so excited. Like it's so crazy. And the Redeemer is such a great gimmick that he needs to just remain the Redeemer. What if they keep the horn but put it at like a lower octave so it's like evil now? And then just like cuts out and then you have some Is is he gonna have to wear like face paint or something? Or is he gonna have to get more tattoos? Here's here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. You like you get him like a a black, like almost like damn near like Gucci type scarf. Like not Gucci, but like satin material. He just wears that over his head. He walks out real slow with the smoke, black trunks, and like, you know, the lights cut out. And then he's just, he's standing in the ring, just like head down with that scarf on. And then just takes it off and then just looks straight at the camera. I mean, that's your presentation without putting a mask that would be on him or anything cool, like that. incredible. But two things. So, two things I feel in my heart of hearts. One, I technically think that. He's too big for that faction. Like, not in size, but like in in audience appeal. I think that's one of those things you don't want to murk up your your non-Steve roster with just adding everybody that's not a Steve in the same group. Because then, who do you got got them going against? A bunch of Steves. And then that weakens, unfortunately, it weakens uh, the House of Black because now with all this manpower, why the fuck don't they have more gold. They need all the gold at this point. All so it's yeah. it really a tough situation. Well, because AEW is the land of factions. And, you know, each faction is fighting to keep their guy a belt. I mean, they don't do gang wars as good as NXT does, but who does, right? But that's what I'm saying. It, it would be hard to see that powerful faction without any championships. It's like, what are y'all, what's your motivation there? I just want to like beat up on elderly Sting and kill kill young Darby Allen and then what? I Sign mean, me up. I'm buying buying t-shirts. Yeah, tonight. but once, but then when does it end? Like, all right, I'm sick of seeing people try to kill Sting. What's next? Like, you got to at, at some point because this business uh, is about I, gold. I see. Uh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. You said, I'm sick of seeing them trying to beat, kill elderly Sting. You didn't say, I'm sick of them trying to kill Darby. No, no one ever gets at all. That. I, that's, that's my favorite. One of my favorite subgenres is watching Darby Allen get beat up. That, that brought me back to a, a, a um, Dolph Ziggler point, but I'll, I'll get there later. We'll, we'll, we'll go back to that about a possible move for him. Um, anyway, out, out of that, okay. uh, so. I had a I had a, a bold take because um, we we've kind of just stumbled we we're kind of jumping all across the world here uh, with the recap this Fabio Fest fighter falling uh, fighter yeah fighter flight the the flight of the pelicans <laughs> flight of the bumblebees whatever that shit is 
was this, in your opinion, the best Rampage, excuse me, Dynamite? I never watch Rampage anymore. But the best Dynamite that you've ever seen. Because to me, I'm saying yes. To date. It's number it's number two. I can't, I was trying to look and see back, like what the f- number mm-hmm. one was. But I remember number one, I remember like saying in the group chat, like this is the best episode of Dynamite ever. Um, but this this last week was definitely number two. If you can't remember it, the, there's, not, I don't there's know. not a close three. If you three. can't remember it, I don't know if it's number one. Because, like, uh, look, what didn't this shit have? I don't even remember. It didn't have many Steves. It had, uh, what's his name? Uh, two dimes, three stacks, a nickel bag. He came out of nowhere from sleeping with the fishes to challenge him for the FTW championship. That's incredible. Jermaine Dupree. Sleeping with the fishes, now he's swimming with the Jermaine sharks. Jermaine Dupree came out. So, so Kevin dead. Gates punched Tony Kevin Meese. Gates is all elite. He said, listen here, nigga. My music, what? Slap. <laughs> he grabbed Tony Knees by and the chain and him. then punched him. It was him. incredible. I was like, Ew. Is anybody having a better, like, two weeks than Kevin Gates? I, I question that right now. It's hard. No. It's hard to. No. It's hard to think otherwise. But yes, no. it, it met my wrestling quota. Then, uh, fighter, fighter fest, freaking fights, all the fight festin, fest of furious seventeen, gave me a BBW fest, and I loved it. It was nothing but beautiful black women. Just, I love her energy. She's definitely not a Steve. So great. Absolutely. J- JD came out. So great. Jade cut a massive so promo. Great. Then she did so some great. things. Her and Athena, like that was. So, so the let's talk about the psychology of this match really quickly. Um, you know, you know what you say about it when Thank Athena was so in cool. there. Thank and Jake we appreciate was in there. Here. Jade really tags good. out. If you've been keeping like, up, Jade has been obliterating Athena on Twitter. Like it was her job. Like she was getting paid overtime for abusing this bitch. I was like, God damn. Mm-hmm. She was just like, so didn't you get fired? You think you could do my job? I thought a, a relevant bitch said what? I was like, oh my God, Stop. Why are you abusing this woman like this? Right? <laughs> Come on, you bum. Cut me, Mick. Cut me. I was like, it is going ham on Twitter. And then she comes in. She gets signed. Yeah, and it's, now it's bad. It's bad. They, like, finally get the chance. They've been talking a lot of shit back and forth. Now they get the chance to get in the ring. They get in the ring. Jay tags out. Great heel move. And now you're watching Kira. Throwing Kira the damn with towel. Them Hogan's in the in the back. She got them damn, uh, she got the boom, boom, pow. How you like my style? I'm like, God damn. And she's getting in there and they going at it. And I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. You bring in uh, Willow Nightingale. She's so fun. So much energy. Love how she moves. She's like, uh, I would say the black version of Dewdrop, but Aww. I like her even more. Um, and it was, it's just so good to see like, this amount of women's wrestling that doesn't involve <laughs> generic uh, insert white girl Steve here, blonde hair, blah, 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 that I did not give a shit about and can't really wrestle. These women could move. They could go. It was fun, fantastic. And then, and okay. then, yeah, I can see you that. get the tag. Jade comes in. Jade and Athena start going at it. You can see that Jade is improving as time goes on. Her and Athena start hitting some moves, reversing each other's reverses. And then I'm like, oh shit, this is getting hot. And then all of a sudden, uh, Jay like takes Athena. Athena sets up for that uh, springboard stunner, crazy top rope stunner shit. And Jay just catches her like, bitch, what you thought? I was like, oh, god damn. 
What up, y'all? It's your boy Smiles, aka Hip Hop Adam Schefter, aka the Josh James, aka for all the ladies, the Chocolate Sauce Bandit. You already know what it is. Tune into an Audible Ruckus every week, and don't forget to check out my two shows at Shot vs Smiles and Music Impulse on all streaming platforms: Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, Amazon Music, whatever. Tune in. It's your boy Smiles, and I'm out. She called her like low, and then just picked her up you know she do her deadlift her rdls is on point picked her up and said guess what bitch fall away slam and i was like oh my god i didn't know i needed this i need this match asap give it to me give it to me baby it was amazing and then ended with uh her what was her kiss of death glam slam ass move to willow that's fucking crazy and willow is not not no skinny bitch to uh (laughs) <laughs> to, to quote uh, Monique and she picked her up like listen here listen here and I was thoroughly impressed great job great showing on all women involved in that match loved it that was, that took me over yeah, the edge of like this match is everything I wanted and this is elevating this uh, dynamite to me where it's <laughs> like I don't recall being this excited or this tuned in to a dynamite you're gonna learn today uh, ever because I, I was like oh dynamite's good it got pieces segments here but it's like oh i didn't even expect any of this stuff and i'm getting it back and forth miro comes out the house of black uh with sting getting sprayed up darby allen getting murdered then uh you get all the bbw fest loved it and then after all that shit with the swerve and the rappers and Kevin Gates deck and Tony Nese, he took one of his abs from him, wore it out. It was crazy. Then you still had a, a Jericho pain maker versus King, Mad King Kingston in a barbed wire everywhere match. And you think it wasn't going to be no blood? Best friends, <laughs> best friends was on that bitch, and they were do, and they they had a, a, a fucking match. It was so many good matches, and it was entertaining. I think with this, like I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, and I know I'm wrong, because because this is what TK does to me every time I get excited. He's gonna now give us a fucking three weeks full of bullshit that I don't care about. But right here, this is what he should study and be like. This is the turning point. If they gave us matches and shows like this weekly, where it actually had like, oh, it felt like things were happening, I'd be in. Yes. And it felt like, oh, this is like storyline, not a bunch of shit that I got to think about. And then I forgot to even mention, come on, man. Dax the (laughs) Axe cut the best promo of the night. Fuck. He said he's going to fight like an eight-year-old girl. And it was incredible because the story he told about a little girl fighting for her life, a hole in her heart, turned out to be his daughter. And if she can fight like that, then so can he. Oh, top guys out. And now I am a fan. I love their music. I'm a complete turncoat. Everything I said, everything I said, everything I said was false. (laughs) They got me. They they got me. What? Hey. Okay, all right. I'm going to I'm going to throw something back at you. Something that I hated from Fighter Fest of the Fallen Flying Flying Fabio World. Yeah. <laughs> the Luchasaurus return. Hated it. Hated it. Uh, okay, I'm going to let you I'm going to let you get it out and then I'm going to counter. It makes no sense. He turned on Jungle Boy. He's been running with Christian all this time. And they haven't even done the thing where, you know, the super heel just kind of beats up on his lackey. And you're like, well, he hasn't even done that. He's low-key giving Luchasaurus a lot of respect. And then Jungle Boy just shows up again. And Luchasaurus goes back to, well, that's my boy. And I'm his dinosaur on some Barney shit. And then, Hi, boys and thing, you know, exactly. <laughs> Next thing you know, we got Jungle Boy, a.k.a. High Level Steve, chasing Christian up the fucking stairway. And I'm like, why? 
Yeah. Why? Um, Why? So, you're, you're right. I, I, I was going to counter, a, but I'm going to counter a little bit less. I agree a thousand percent now, because when I first seen it, I didn't factor in all the other things that needed to be considered. Being, uh, when I first seen it, I was just like, okay, he didn't attack him, but he didn't thrash him or anything, or he didn't team up with him. He just kind of let him go through. That was like a sign of respect. Uh, I'm, I was okay with that. But now that you added like some context, I do recall literally last week, uh, Christian came out and said, hey, uh, Hollywood Steves, one of y'all, Varsity Steves, one of y'all look like Jungle Boy. Get him, Luchasaurus. And Luchasaurus murdered him because exactly. he looked like him. So when him actually comes into the picture, you can't be like, oh, okay, you're my friend. Oh, you make my eyes rain. No, nigga, you gotta kill that motherfucker. So, like, it, it just... That's like, bad storytelling. Surround, surrounded by an amazing show, that one thing is just the donut hole right there. And I'm like, God damn yeah, it. Yeah. Come on, Tony. You, you were so good. Right. Why? And he should have he should have like, acted like he was gonna let him go and then grabbed his head and thrashed him and then Christian laughed or something like that. That would have been incredible. Um, you, you, you know what this reminded me of? And I'm gonna I'm take it back a little bit. When uh, when they no. were both like, "Come here, buddy. Come here." Outside the courtroom, and then the clown was like, "Come here, buddy. Come here." And he was all abusive, and the dog didn't know which one to go to. That is Luchasaurus. He is confused. He's like, "Do I wear the black mask or the green one?" And then he's like, "Yeah, yeah." No, that's that's not. Yeah, it. I was I was gonna go more wrestling. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Okay. Airbook, great so, movie, 1995. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test your memory. Do you remember when the authority was making Big Show just knock people out? Yes. And they were like, hey. your, your family's in debt. You owe us. And he did And then they had him knock out Dusty. Begrudgingly. And he cried about it. And then the ne- very next week, he was just knocking people out. And like he was healed again. You're like, what the fuck just happened? You were crying about having to do this a couple weeks ago. Like, now you just, you just feel like punching niggas now? I mean, I get it. Sometimes you got to punch niggas, right. but I, I don't know. I, that's what it reminded me of. And like what I don't want to ever see them do with any of their bigs is have them flip flop between heel and face more than the, big the way show. WWE did with Mark Henry and Big Show for a long time. Cause they like, oh, we don't have anything for you to do. Hey, this guy needs a friend or hey, we need to give this face, you know, a rub. Right. Go be, be a heel evil for a week for or one two. match. I, yeah, I, I don't want to see blue. that happen. <laughs> so that that's why it just really fucking. You haven't been me. on TV for months, but just go out there. Last time we seen you, you were just slapping high fives of children. Now you're evil. Go. Now go power slam John Cena <laughs> yes, in the sand for suit. no reason. Yeah, that was the worst. Because that's what I do. Oh, that was so bad. No, wait, wait, no. Power bombing John Cena in the salmon suit was incredible. Uh. Uh, it, it was incredible, but like like you said, he was off TV for like three weeks. No, I'm, oh, I'm fine with. But see, that actually, if you if you recall, come on, wrestling wrestling fans, with with our memory here, let's go back in the way way back machine. Um, that was based on him saying he was going to retire, so he was playing the face, yeah, no. and then he flipped right there, and then went on the uh, the uh, Hall of Pain run. That was incredible. What they did with the Big Show, on the other hand, was, hey, Big Show, we haven't seen you legitimately in months. You come out here looking like they squeezed the bottom of the toothpaste too tight, but left the cap on. So all your legs all skinny, but the top is all brolic. And and then, I will, I'm angry. And then he comes, and then he loses to whoever. And then he comes out again and defends somebody three months later after we haven't seen him but the last time we seen him he was evil that's what i hated don't flip like they flipped the big show the worst mark henry they at least like gave him the hall of pain run and then he went against uh randy orton he went against christian cage he went against some some heavy hitters in that run and it was incredible that hall of pain shit was great but big show he never got that not, not not to nerd it down too much but you're flipping them. The salmon suit thing came after the Hall of Pain run. Did it? Yes. The salmon suit thing, when they gave him one last match against John, 
that was pretty close to the end of Mark being in the ring, like at all. And like, and that was my point. Like for like, you hadn't seen him on a few weeks, but ah. before that, he was doing like some kind of like face things, like in tag matches with R Truth for Kofi Kingston, and he was just like, "Huh, these new brothers, they all right." Well, but he was still coming out with that Hall of Pain music. But he yeah. was kind of leaning face, and then he's off TV for a few weeks, and then he comes out. I'm gonna retire, and then John, and then John, you know, yep. let his guard down because hey, John's just kind of dancing with they the other black guys up. now. But I like that. Cool. See, I still yeah. like it. Either way, I still like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I I like and, it. But and what that I'm still made like, more sense than what than what they did. Yeah. Show. But again, it was it's just those quick flips they did because there was no reason for Mark Henry to go to that face route that he did in the in between time. Maybe they, maybe they the just didn't have anything for him to do, so they said, "Our truth, Kofi need need a little bit of rub. Let's put him next to Mark." Look, Mark Henry was like, "Listen, y'all thought I was y'all thought I was good. Ha <laughs> ha! I was just fooling y'all. Ugh, threw a toothpick at your face, and then he killed you, and he put you in the Hall of Fame." Yeah. So. But my but my thing was like, had they just kept him healed that whole time, and then like made him you know do the retirement thing, John could still come out. And be like, and just kind of be like, you know, a little wary, like, uh, I know who you are, but I respect you and, you know, shake his hand, happy retirement, because that's what John does as the locker room leader. And then Mark can still do the slam and say, I ain't going nowhere, fool. Like, <laughs> but the problem was they kept doing, the, they did these quick flips and it bothered me the same, but again, it still made more sense than this Luchasaurus shit. Yeah. And I'm not mad at it as, Tony, as much as you got shit. some splain in the duel on Dynamite. What on Fighter Fest? But Fallen Fest. Fest. No, Fighter Fest is over after Rampage. Next week it's Fight for the Fallen. Uh, more fights for for Fallen yeah. Fevers. <laughs> yeah, I think they're I think they're doing this one for like some animal animal charity this time around. Uh, I, don't, okay. I don't know. Whatever. At this point, it doesn't matter. Fight just, for the, the Fallen. The Fallen. Yeah, just animals. keep confusing us with these random title specials. We don't care. Just make the show good. Like, if that's what it takes. Fight for the birds falling out the sky. Right. I was like, if y'all got to be like the whale fest, uh, what's that, chef aid, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Name every week some other bullshit. As long as the show slaps like this, and maybe you bring a rapper of every, like, when they go to, uh, I don't know, wherever they go, they need to bring a rapper out. Like, you know, where's our gun be at everything, but. Uh, Boy. When they go somewhere, just bring, bring the motherfuckers out. And that feels like that changed the energy in the building. And when they do it right, this one, this was an overly yeah. black uh, dynamite. Maybe that's why it was so good. I'm, I'm so pro black. When that shit just be, when, when they just put a bunch of black people on screen, I'm like, yeah. I don't even care. Hey, what man? We, we, we get over. We get Easy. over. Hobbs is over. Ricky is over. Right. Swerve is over. Keith is over. You, the baddies are over. Stokely's a genius. That is why I just figured it out. This was the best dynamite ever because of the lack of Steve's. My bright week in, week out is who the fuck is this guy? I don't know who this is. Guess what? I had like none of that. I didn't really have any any overly Steve issue. Just a bunch of black people that I love. And then a couple of non-black people that I love. So this isn't Fighter Fest, it's Blacker Fest? Uh fight for the blackness <laughs> hey I'm, I'm with it um, but fight the power fist man fight the power fist <laughs> it's even better <laughs> but yes um, dynamite fantastic uh, we can go to something that is still probably pretty fantastic to me which Still, even though I love Fight Fest for the Fabios, um, NXT 2.0. So for me, this was the first time in a long time that Dynamite was better than NXT. But damn it, NXT is still so consistently good. It doesn't matter. It is fucking blowing my mind. I'm like, how is it just this good every week? Yeah. It It's so just... good because they have continuous storylines and they play in and weave in and out. And it's like, I keep telling you, Zion Quinn is the fan. He came out like Robert De Niro. He's like, you think it's over now? 
It's a bunch of guys that loves to do the things, but I love baseball, so I'm going to be crazy. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but I like it. And I was, I'm was, i rolling with that. They give, they give me better segments of... Uh, what the hell is that thing called? Better segments of um, the barbershop. Love that. Yeah, yeah. This was the best barbershop segment. Yeah. Bar none. Bar none. Because yeah, they had a bunch of black people in there. Eliminate the Steves. Add the blacks. You win every time. We get over. <laughs> As Dub said. We and like over. the connectedness of the stories too. So just in the first match alone. Cameron Grimes versus JD Mc who? McDonough. Have you had your break to Donna? So <laughs> that match. Oh my god. That match has the you know the arrival of JD jumping Braun Breaker and then challenging Cameron Grimes. That's two storylines right there. And then Gacy pops up. Gacy's looking at Grimes, getting ready to recruit him. Oh shit. That's another storyline you add in. Then you also think, oh shit, Gacy's about to interest introduce us to who the dyad is this week too that's three fucking storylines in one match and that match is only like six minutes long you're like it i've always said it feels like they all work in the same place yes but that doesn't that doesn't happen on like raw and smackdown it doesn't feel like the miz and roman Reigns work in the same place (laughs) Yeah, unless unless the the Miz walks out and then Roman just disrespects like, why are you talking to me? Yeah, and you're like, damn, like he's the boss and you're like basically it's like a a, a basketball team or football team. Like you're the rookie, you shouldn't even be on my level. You can't talk to me. This is our group over here. Versus NXT feels like the office for wrestling, where it's like everybody's yeah, there, like- everybody's pretty much the same people or on the same level at least and then they just kind of have all these random interactions because just like toxic attraction is doing their own thing but yet anofi and blade would just randomly go up and talk to them it's all like i love it because they always trying to shoot their shot and i love yep, it because africans love white women <laughs> continuous <laughs> storytelling ladies and gentlemen that's what you do. I love it um but speaking of all that continuous storytelling can we talk about how me and you were continuously right when it came to NXT. I mean. So let, let's start off with yours. Let's start off with yours. You called it from A1 day Damn, one. Damn, that was a long time that ago. That the dyad was the grizzled young veterans. Yeah. And. Grizzled. We got young it. Young dyad. <laughs> Soon. We got it. We got to chalk this one up. <laughs> as another missed opportunity. Because those guys were over. And they were just great at everything when it came to tag team wrestling. Like, Zach Gibson is... Oh, Love Gibson. You could have strapped a rocket to that guy, gave him a singles run, and you wouldn't have been disappointed. Love Gibson. Didn't appreciate him at the time in NXT UK when he won the or was about to win. I don't remember if he won or was about to win. I don't watch NXT UK enough. But... He won the um, the UK tournament the second okay. time around. Yeah, that's what I thought I was watching. I was like, who is this guy? But yeah. once I seen him as a the grizzled young vet in that presentation, I was like, oh, I get it. I, like, I love this guy. He's he's awesome. So I, I appreciate yeah. them, and I enjoyed them, and I always wanted to see them win the tag belts. They never did in that presentation. They cleaned them up. They removed their beards. They look creepy as hell now. And I was like, these dudes look. Gave like, them like the one white, the white like uh, contact yeah, lens. That's Kane's son. Creepy as fuck. They didn't tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> they look creepy as fuck. No, they old dude. Uh, was his partner? James Gray yeah. or Jagger yeah, Reed? No. Jagger Reed. Uh, they just took his beard off, and he looks like a creepy. Um, I don't know. He just looks creepy and like a like a choir director. I don't like it, but he definitely looks like he could have been a, a villain in the movie. What was that Black Phone or whatever? It's he called. looks like uh, what's the name's brother? Uh, I got kids. Oh, he's yes. Slater's brother. That like his his creepy yeah. his creepy younger brother that like is possibly a pedophile. I don't <laughs> that they don't talk about. Yeah, the like, keep up. Oh, you got them. What? Take them kids away from Jagger Reed. Where where are my kids? You love them with Jagger? No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I I, I knew it because I was like, there's like you'll never you won't see us as something again. And then they were gone. I was like, man, they, those guys are too talented. They're not gonna just get rid of them. And then these two dudes came out 
uh, this was a couple months later. And then when they did, they hit their move. The ticket to make. And I was like, hmm, I think I've seen that before. But couldn't play. Yeah, like it. I was like, and I was like, I think that's the ticket to mayhem. But I'm like, but I was like, no, they wouldn't do that to the Grizzly Young Veterans. Those guys are too nah, good. Man, that's the Grizzly Young Wrong. Veterans, bro. Wrong. <laughs> I was like, if if it ain't uh, the Good Brothers, I was like, that's the Grizzly Young Veterans. And I was like, nah, it's the Grizzly Young Veterans. That makes more sense. I was like, GYV is now down with uh, the the D the D I Y A M D the Dyad. The Dyad. What up, y'all? It's your boy Smiles, aka Hip Hop Adam Schefter, aka La Josh James, aka for all the ladies, the Chocolate Sauce Bandit. You already know what it is. Tune into an audible ruckus every week, and don't forget to check out my two shows at Shot vs Smiles and Music Impulse on all streaming platforms: Spotify, Apple, SoundCloud, Amazon Music, whatever. Tune in. It's your boy Smiles, and I'm out. Or as they're known together, the Schism. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> too much too much like they don't have to be that like it's kind of like they just fill in bray wyatt shoes of some sort and i'm like eh, it, it's fine it's gonna work because it's nxt and nxt just does things that work way better but i could have deal without it honestly what do you how do you think about yeah it? like th- this will work at nxt um gacy has to be a solo act on the main roster because on the main roster, there's, I don't know, like... Anytime they call up a faction... I think faction, if he would go to the main roster with this, good. like, he would need heavies, the way Bray Wyatt had heavies. Mm-hmm. Even though Bray Wyatt was a heavy himself. Um, Gacy, I mean, same thing. He would have to go to the main roster in this with heavies. Because the way the thing that works about this on NXT is that there aren't too many guys on that roster bigger than Joe Gacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He gets up to the main roster. Everybody. He's just a guy. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about Riddle, Randy, Drew, the shit, the Usos are big dudes, Roman, Big E, Sheamus, Ridge, all those, like, Ridge. a lot of big dudes on that main roster, pause. <laughs> what did you say? Ridge. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Butch. Right. Butch. Get about your boy Butch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, but anyways, getting back to how I was right. I said from the moment that Corgate J turned, which again, still love that turn. Such such a big yeah, fan of it. Same. That they were gonna use that as a reason to get rid of those women tag titles. She walked out there, cut a promo. Alondra J. Stumbled through it a little bit in the beginning, and then just pulled a Alondra Blaze and dropped that title in the Alondra garbage. Alondra Jade. I like it. I like it. I was like, oh shit. Um and, and wait, wait, and, you mentioned that, and I was like, damn, that is something. Toxic Attraction just lost those belts. And she they took it. She jumped old girl, and I was like, wait, so what the hell does that mean? I said this last week. And then she just tossed that shit in the trash, and they didn't move a muscle. Like, eh, whatever. Yeah, they didn't talk about it or nothing in no promo, and that lets me know that those titles Done. are just dead. Yeah. I'm like, oh, because JC and GZ, they love those uh-huh. titles. They was beating everybody's ass over those titles. Yeah. For them not to say a word about it. That's how you know it's over. Are, and and, and perhaps are. that's why they lost them. But like, you know what? Yep. Let's just get them off of them, and then we can just do away with them, and that, that's going to make the most sense. Because we have to turn Cora, because we have to give Roxy Perez some, some actual opposition. Right. But anyways, just more NXT greatness. We got more Gang Wars. Oh, dude. We got more gang and, wars. But dysfunctional gang wars. At this point, both of those uh, organizations are like in in kind of like in disarray a little bit, but one more than the other. Yeah. And I kind of love it. So. Roger Strong is so toxic and it just is so toxic. Great. He's more toxic than Joe Gacy. He's like, oh, like you man. guys, we're a family, we're a team. We gotta be there. He's like, I need to have a match with you. He's like, I'm having. He's having a match with one of the members, and then he see they see uh the who, who, the, Creed the Creed brothers, brothers getting jumped, and then he looks and was like, oh, I'm about to go help him. He's like, sweet knee to your face. <laughs> Let me finish this match first. All right, that's like the equivalent of fucking like, hey guys, we gotta go. 
You're like, all right, mom, almost done with the game. He's like, let's just pause it till we, are you okay? <laughs> no. All right, I'll win. And then you just leave. Like, what the fuck? Hold up. There was a tie break. No. But the, the best part was when he was, when Roger ran back there, he was like, yeah, you guys okay? And then when Damon finally gets back, he's like, Damon, where right. were you? Why are you moving so slow, like, man? He's like, the greatest he's like, the oh, I'm, I'm, my neck hurts. My face hurts. Oh. I love but, it. Uh, but yeah, the, also coming out of that. On the other end. Julius Creed is a star. Oh, yeah. On site. <laughs> like, uh, he cut that promo, and I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, you know he definitely said no. Somebody, somebody, it's somebody might need to tell him that this ain't Twitter, real. Twitter Twitter going to do their thing when, as soon as he leaves uh, NXT, like, uh, his his uncovered tweets of him saying nigga and rapping uh, Fabio <laughs> foreign lyrics. It's coming. It's coming. It was <laughs> Like, oh, God. He was definitely at Duke hanging with all the basketball players. Back. Him and him and Jason Tatum probably good friends. Oh, uh, you know, you know how it goes. Um, right. Also, on the other end, on the other end of that spectrum, Tony D cut a great promo and said, "Listen here, Creed brothers, you can do whatever you want to. You can get as excited and loud and talk shit. I don't care. Like <laughs> the D'Angelo family." Gonna whip your ass. <laughs> like, yes. Tony Tony D is one guy that really gets his character. He's good on the mic. He's he's gotten so much yeah. better from uh his days at the Olive Garden. It's it's so good. <laughs> remember, remember he was just giving us extra parmesan like all the time. Now he got the sauce. Coin it. Yeah, he he was cheesy at first, but then like now you're like, uh, he might actually kill people. Yeah, like I don't know. Like, yeah. We're not worried about that. It's like, we are the stronger family. We're the strongest family. And then even with, they done absorbed uh, Legato. And he's still like, yeah, we, we we still moving. And it's like, I'm waiting they for the turn. absorbed Legato and then threw two dimes in the ocean. And, and put uh, it's still, and, put Santos in the yes. hospital. And I'm like, just waiting for it to come back around from. It's going it's to break up in a beautiful fashion. But I think we're going to get a couple months of this. Till, till like they're gonna have them all singled out. They're probably gonna take out uh, the other, the other one. I don't know what his name is. Not three stacks, two dimes, bag, nickel sack, uh, whatever. Bag of money. Yeah, whatever that dude's name is. They're gonna take him out first, and then all of a sudden it's gonna be Tony D in the middle, and then just be surrounded by Legato. It's gonna be incredible. So. Tony stacks bags of money, gets like kidnapped the way Legato was doing at first. Mm -hmm. I would like that. And then you're like, who who did it? Who did it? And then you know you find out it was Santos. And then they run up on Tony. Look I like it. Mm -hmm. Look Just. And then we get the Legato run we deserve. And Absolutely. Santos takes that belt off of Burn Breaker. That's what we need. All right. That's what we need. That's what we need. Get the people what they want. Electra takes that belt off of Mandy. Cause hashtag Electra. Alright, let me let me stop fancy booking and think about Electra Lopez. Let me calm right. down a little bit. Relax. Um Axiom Ugh. debut. A kid as the math superhero. Your thoughts. Um <laughs> How can I say this as politely as possible? We <laughs> Fucking lame. It's like they keep trying to recreate Rey Mysterio, but he's there. Dominic ain't it. Uh, uh, Fifteen other random guys that filled in as one guy ain't it. It's like Axiom. That's a horrible name. It's not catching on. Uh, it sounds like that. I mean, you know what happened? It sounds like that cult that did sex stuff. Did <laughs> you like? That's a that's a bad start to begin with. Yeah. You know what happened? I think they went to Vince and they tried to explain to him that this kid was from Spain, but he does all the cruiserweight stuff. And they could see in Vince's eyes that it just he wasn't getting it. So he, he speaks Spanish. Yeah. And he, he jumps around. Luchador. He's not and he's not Rey Mysterio. I don't get it. I don't think we can sell it. I'm like, alright guys, we we don't want to fire this kid. We got to put a mask on him. Make him Rey Mysterio. Well, what are we going to exactly. call him? Like, where did Axiom come from? Where, 
the mad super he was to calculate. If he was so good at calculating shit, he wouldn't have got beat up as much as he did in that damn match. Like, so, according to Chelsea Green on Twitter, Deanna Perrazzo came up with that entire gimmick and then just kind of pitched it to creative one day and like, just heck, hey, this is a thing, you know, use it for somebody. And they were just kind of sitting on it. That shit is and weak. That's kind of where they got it from. A kid was whack, but I, Axiom is I worse. use math. I use math to get over the bullies. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. And then the entrance was weird. He moved like it was yeah. the Matrix or something. Like, he didn't do any like, of that in the ring. Can't keep that up. I was like, what the, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is but that? He tried it and dude just And then they put him in line. there against like against Chinese Steve, <laughs> aka Dante Chen. <laughs> they were the crowd was rooting for Dante. 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 Hey, listen, I just watched a movie that Dante Chen should have started in. Have you ever seen the movie Blue Bayou? great movie no. it's really sad but it's about an asian american or asian man that uh gets adopted in in uh, america in louisiana by white parents and then ends up having a child with this white woman and basically he's he's a felon so he ends up maybe getting deported and they're trying to keep him back while his baby's getting born super sad movie but he sounds like Dante Chin. Well, Dante yes, Chin should have been literally that should have been his name, Dante Chin. But it, it it's a great movie. Watch it. But yeah, Dante Chin. I was like, I'm excited for him. Axiom is weak. I know y'all supposed to be pushing. Didn't him. they like present Dante Chin as like a superhero type gimmick too? I don't know. Yeah, like so. I'm, now I'm thinking about it. yeah. So his debut, like they did the vignettes before, and like they had him like wearing a bandana. He would do the superhero landing and shit with like a, a whole coat on. I'm like, is he like a Chinese superhero? Is that his gimmick? That his and then they just gimmick? dropped it after a week and they were just like, all right, he's a no intro yeah. guy. He's a he's a Chinese Steve. Let's have Von Wagner beat him up a little bit. His name's um, Dante. Yep. Well, look, speaking of Von Wagner. Mm, Von Wagner. He... It's your boy. No. This man said, <laughs> This is supposed to be your street champion? I just beat his ass. I was like, Oh, gosh. Get this off my. Get Von Wagner back off my TV. I'm done with him. I tried. <laughs> I tried. I can't. It's just not working. Gave it the old college try. You just couldn't yeah, do it. Yeah. I gave the old Chase you try. It didn't work for me. So. The real question is, why is Solo getting beat up at SmackDown? Like, what? Where's your so-called tribal chief? Mm, I mean, he's too good. Might be, see. might be time to call in future president Dwayne. <laughs> the, the real head of the table. I mean, so many things in, up in the air. And I was like, why is he in SmackDown? Like, Uh-oh. They done seen what he's doing down there and they love it. And he's like, they're going to take I'm telling you, the only thing that hindered him was Carmelo Hayes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Carmelo Hayes was smoking him on, on the Twitter like uh like Athena was getting smoked by Jade. I was like, but then also Carmelo Hayes is just that guy, and it's just that obvious. I mean, to like, everybody but Vince, because Braun Breaker still has that belt. I'm like, it's it's so apparent. I mean, it's funny. Like you you watch NXT and you're like, the guys who are gonna be stars coming out of NXT are gonna be Melo. Santos if they give him a chance and Julius Creed. Because Santos is everything they wanted our Buffalo Del Rio to be. He's everything so they like, want every other Mexican wrestler to be. Like, yeah. everybody who didn't make it as, as Rey Mysterio, they wanted a Santos. They wanted that to be Andrade. Andrade couldn't talk. They, they So they had to give him a mouthpiece. Like, Santos just comes out like, look, I got it all. And, they keep, and it's like, can't you let this man win? He got the you look. Know, I've been doing this for forever. He, he has the my look. Family been doing this forever. He has the talent, the skills, the mic work. We rich. He's like a can't we miss talent. You. And I'm like, man, I wish they would just. But I'm just scared they're gonna ruin them on the on the main roster because the main roster is bloated with bullshit. And it's like, ugh. It's like it's so weird. It's like how is it bloated with bullshit? Because it's like it feels like because yeah. it feels like there's an absence of of character and shit 
Like, he could come on SmackDown right now. Legato could go to SmackDown and rule that shit. And then start gang wars with the bloodline. And it would be incredible. That's yeah. how you book sign, them. Sign me you up. break them in there. It's a it's a new family in town. Legato. And, like, the thing, like, you're talking about the Samoan dynasty versus Legato. Like, that's like... Incredible. And Santos is wrestling royalty in his own right. Incredible. That's how you... That's literally how you do it. And if you introduce them there, that's how you turn Roman back to a little facey tweeny guy. Because you just, out of nowhere, Legato just jumps the Usos. And then he gets mad and he's like, the hell you doing? He starts putting them out and then also, or maybe they start jumping him. Yeah. So good. And you, you you make it like a bigger deal of the fact that Santos, Santos's father, El Fantasma, like, El Fantasma was a big deal for like, 40 mm-hmm. fucking years. So you talk about a guy who's well traveled and like you talk about a guy who has the money and the stature to kind of challenge Roman. Like it, it just works. Absolutely. I, 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 and Santos in the ring is a better wrestler. So not only could he have Roman jump, he can out wrestle Roman. And then he has two guys that can really go that they could definitely have some bangers with the Usos. It's like, what more do y'all want? This shit is built in greatness. Like, and and for the stereotypical bullshit y'all be pulling, the crowd would get it. They go, oh, the cartel, cool. <laughs> they, 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 you know that <laughs> the, they always try to keep it as simple as possible for the um, yeah. for the main roster crowd. Literally, you just got, oh yeah, oh god, oh. yeah. They they might do narcotics. I don't know, but. Love it, and then you have um, their name is definitely being changed to Legato Cartel when they get to the roster. I'm, I'm okay with that, just, which doesn't sound just bad. Legato, um, <laughs> it's just a little keep, racist. Keep uh, keep your girl over there, she gotta oh, be yeah. there. Electra Lopez needs to come up with them too, with the crazy outfits and talking that shit, and then just like slapping people. Oh, it'd be so good! Like, where give me this now. They, they would want to make that shit like a, a, a mid-card faction, but that shit could be straight to the top, and I would love it. Uh-huh. That could be the next, uh, like, Guerrero-type shit. Like, it would be incredible. Like, you you got your Eddie right there, because he is primed and ready. So yeah. we're never going to Just never going to see it. Uh, that just made me sad. All right. What, what, what <laughs> that just made me sad. Down. I haven't watched SmackDown in oh, literally six months. Not not SmackDown. NXT. I'm sorry. We we would never talk right. about SmackDown. We don't well, not, we don't not talk never, about SmackDown here. SmackDown is Bruno. We don't mm. talk about either. Uh, so I I miss Braun Breaker calling out JD McDonough. It's probably the same promo he's been given for six months. You missed it. Let let me give you a yeah. quick uh, reenactment of it. <laughs> JD McDonough appears on the screen. Hey there, Braun. Yeah, I know you got some injuries to your shoulder. But guess what? I'm a surgeon. And I know how to break. Oh, no. Yeah, I remember now. I, I did and see And then Braun just goes. What are you talking about my shoulder? You're on. He's so excited. I'm like, oh, man. Slow down. He just be yelling shit. Barking. Let's go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, all right, but I didn't enjoy that. Do you find yourself just rooting against yes. Braun, no matter yes. who they put out there? All yes. right. Want to make sure I wasn't the only one. And it's not that I dislike Braun. I'm just like, he's not ready hey, for this. I w- I was there at uh that NXT show. What was it? Stand and deliver. Yeah. When him versus uh Ziggler. Oh. I went fucking nuts when Ziggler was yes! even though he lost it the very next night. I was so excited because I'm like, oh, Braun is gonna win. I, like, uh, <laughs> I don't like him. How does the how does the crowd react to Braun? Uh, it was like it was like mild. It was like because okay. his presentation is good, but once he's in the ring, I'm like, oh. and he he botched 
a few of those uh first opening moves so like the you try to catch what's name in the air with the um catch him in the air with the uh what not sidewalk slam spine buster and he missed that he yeah. botched that he botched something else and i was like oh this is a sloppy match then he kind of wasn't name ziggler helped to settle him down um bobby root came in there and they started to like okay now get him down and ready and they start rebuilding the matchup and that's when it got good yo it's e-ray the quasi bad guy the diet coke of evil the side god of pod and i'm here to tell y'all come check out my show binge flicks and chill you never know what you're gonna get but we always talking some good shit when it comes to television and the latest movies so we want to bring y'all in we want to make sure you have a good time you learn something you laugh you cry you might stab a nigga or two i don't know what you're gonna get but that shit is popping so come check out binge flicks and chill and it's me e-ray and i'm out so yeah it was there was a lot going on there but i was like ah, i don't need this uh, and, and then once he actually won i was so excited i was like yes i'm thinking about well where can Braun go now from here or where not Braun, but they can now take Braun off tv and let him rebuild or something and ziggler can have this and that no they re-ran that shit for some reason on monday night raw and he lost and i was like wait what why is that a thing why is any of this happening it's like that's not, not how any of this works. I was disgusted, and then I didn't even know what to do with myself. Like, that was trash, and I was like, Braun Breaker, why did Braun immediately get a rematch when nobody else does? Disgusting. Because Vince. Vince saw him, he's like, oh, no, we got to have him on Monday. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm already planning, because I see Zion Quinn has it out for uh, the equalizer. He wants that ass, and uh, I think Apollo Cruz needs to get rid of him, and then go and take that belt from Braun. I would be thoroughly excited. I like the new presentation. Besides him being the equalizer, I think it's hilarious. But I'm, <laughs> I'm with it. Uh, Apollo, love it. Um, if not that, um, honestly, it's it's a plethora of people that can take that belt off of Braun, but Braun don't need the belt no more. Honestly, I wish, um, I, I think they're doing this, this heel turn type thing with uh, Cameron Grimes. And I'm like, that yeah. Was, oh yeah, yeah that's he's happening. Getting, he's getting frustrated and he's getting angry. I said, not now. And I was like, yes. So I would love to see heel Grimes come out and beat up Bron and then just make, take that belt from him. Or, well, if Grimes goes heel, it's going to be to join with Gacy. I don't think I don't think it's to join though. I think it's just because he he's just yelling at people. Oh, I do. I think he's a lost soul after losing all these matches, and that's oh, that's what Gacy's going to prey on. He's going to prey on the lost souls. Making all these extra factions. I don't want those extra people in the faction. I didn't. I, I didn't make it. You, you throw in Miro in the House of Black. <laughs> now you throw in Grimes in into the the, the schism ad, the the sky ad. Skynet, whatever they call e, it. E, I'm just a newly do, do, hired do, do, writer. Do, 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 I'm just a newly hired writer. I just, I take what they're giving me and I just say, all right, well, if, you, if we're doing this, I guess we're doing it. I just book it out. I, don't, I, don't. I wouldn't have put anybody with Joe Gacy. I thought he was perfect by himself. I wouldn't. He was cool with Harlan until they decided Harlan couldn't wrestle when they fired Harlan. Harlan. Even though he's on AEW now. Is he? Uh, yeah, he wrestled a couple matches on no. Dark or... Or maybe oh, it was AEW Gray. I ain't watch it. I yeah. I am anonymous. And that is Parker Dwardow. Mm. I'll tell you so I'll take that with a side of barbecue sauce. And here's Excalibur. Excalibur saying a lot of matches and the matches that happen all tune in Sunday. Bye. What? <laughs> How do you get all those words out in three seconds? Because it's Sting! <laughs> Thank you, Shivani. Oh, exploded all over. Oh, three. Those are to- so different of announcers, and I'm like, yo, this doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm I'm with it. They don't need. I think I like when they just call Jr. out for for certain matches, but he don't need to be there all the time. They call him out for the second hour of the yeah. night. You're yeah. like, oh, I guess. 
It's okay. All right. Until guys start working at fast pace that he can't yeah, keep oh, up with. Oh, 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 well, well, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, all right. Barbecue sauce <laughs> and, and Natty's sister. Barbecue and, sauce and Natty's sister. Genie. Uh, I said a genie. Looks delicious with some barbecue sauce. <laughs> yeah, buddy. I'm with you. Anyway. Uh, JR, the young bucks are in the ring right uh, now. I'm about oh, to young what buck What'd you say, Excalibur? Myself. Whoa, JR, relax. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm from Oklahoma. <laughs> Whatever. Boomer uh, sooner. Yeah, JR, what, what do you think about Moxley as, you know, your world champion in the ring? Uh, um... Oh, he's he's so great on Raw. I don't, I don't know Excalibur. And <laughs> I'm thinking about Raw and Natty's right. sister. I'm about Raw. I mean, man with the mask. What's wrong with Jr.? <laughs> Unfortunately, Mr. Regal, nothing. He's just like this now. <laughs> he's just like <laughs> William Regal's great too. Um, oh, that that did happen as well. But we'll get to that at a at a later date. Um, no more fighter fallen Fabio talk. Uh, NXT 2.0, fantastic. Steel. Um, raw, meh. Main roster still giving me meh vibes. Uh, SummerSlam yeah. is where where we need oh, to. It's coming up. Yeah, we need to get there. It's, it's coming a up. week from this Saturday. All pay per views for the rest of this year are going to be on Saturday. So. Fun times. I'll still be watching on Sunday. Because <laughs> probably won't be watching them live. Um, because you go outside? Uh, I mean, I just got a life. Rather, with or without, I'm trying to get ready for my house and all the bullshit. Like, I have to learn random things about refrigerators, counter depth. Gotta learn couches and random shit that I never need to know as a man. But, you know, <laughs> just, just acquiring <laughs> knowledge like I do. So, Probably won't have that Fair. time to do that. But with SummerSlam approaching, uh, I don't necessarily, because I think we'll have, next week, we'll be here to recap, or not recap, but to predict the matches. Themselves. The go-home yes. show. The go-home show, um, if you will. So I want to just talk about, like, as far as SummerSlam goes, I seen a, I seen a, um, a tweet that was talking about Seth Rollins doesn't miss it. At SummerSlam, they show some of his greatest, uh, his greatest outfits, and I was like, "Yeah, he he was on fire." He had didn't he do the uh, white Power yes, Ranger fit at SummerSlam? He, he, he did yeah, the white Power yeah. Ranger. Here, I'm, let me pull it up really quick. If I got it at my disposal, I believe it was the white Power Ranger was one of them. Um, one of the King Slayer joints was was another one that I loved. I was like, "Oh, that is." fire um yeah he did a red one he actually did the uh the most recent one was uh was it the the band leader looking shit oh yeah the, uh, yeah drum line looking band fit the, the, the drum major thing yeah the, the, was it the blue and gold yes he had that he yeah, had the ray mysterio fire. joint I, I don't know if that was when he was gouging Rey Mysterio's eyeballs out his head or not. <laughs> that was a gruesome dark time in WWE history. It's like <laughs> so the Performance Center <laughs> era. He was gouging eyes. I was like, yo. So there's that. What's your favorite SummerSlam memory? I don't know. I'm not really a, a historian. I'm pretty trash. Okay. With, I can't remember. Like <laughs> I don't remember things at the at the time. So I'm trying to think. B A, where I are know. you? When I was I like, B A is, is needed here for. He's like, <laughs> well, actually, I remember, guys. I was I was nothing but three inches old. Like what? How? That's not even a measurement of time, B A. I was just a sperm in my mama's cooter. Like what is happening? <laughs> But I could hear the sweet callings of Dusty Roads. <laughs> what? This this is the thing. Me, I don't. I just watch shit. I, I don't retain that knowledge because I need to know about refrigerators. So I don't have time to think about uh, <laughs> as much room. I had to clear my database for random wrestling uh, SummerSlam events. Um, 
but yeah what is your favorite maybe i can find something there because if it ain't wrestlemania or like something specifically i've seen then i don't remember like those particular um so i i got two okay and my two are mostly because like they were affirming things for me as a fan Mm -hmm. the first one is rock beating booker t at SummerSlam Hmm. to like win the wcw title because that was one of those things where like, yeah, I, I knew I backed the right guy. Uh, I knew I backed the right guy. I like Book, but Rock is Rock. And Rock carrying that big gold belt, it just felt right. It it looked right. It felt right. It was right when Rock was starting like to really get cut before he left us for Hollywood. I was say, which which Rock was, was that? What was he wearing at the time? Was it the leather? That was when he was wearing shirt? like the white Just Bring It short shirt and like the black pants uh, all the okay. time. The, the um. Warm up rock is what I call them. Okay. Yeah, warm up. There you go, warm up rock. Um, my other one is AJ Styles beating John Cena clean. That's that's gonna be at the one. SummerSlam. I forgot that was at SummerSlam, but that those matches were incredible. I loved they because they had about a three pay per view run or something had, like that. They had three. It was Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, and then John left for a while, and then Styles just went on his yeah. run. Became world champion, and then at the Rumble, Cena came back and took the belt off of him for reign number 16. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, that would be my one, because I really loved, and I didn't think, that was at a time where you're like, John don't lose. So I was like, I think they were about to bring him in there to beat AJ Styles. I'm like, ugh, I don't want that. Yeah, and again, it's another one of those affirming things, because I was one of those guys, some of you for a long time, like, yeah, AJ Styles is kind of sort of the best wrestler walking planet Earth. And it's not close. And, you know, people who didn't watch Impact or, you know, me would, you know, find the New Japan stuff online. We'd be like, oh, OK, whatever. And we're like, ah, just wait. Just I wait. heard I heard the name. I seen the moves. I remember his first match. They introduced him as that, that Georgia Bulldog. And I was like, I'm not enjoying this. I love the presentation of how he came in there. You know, they don't want none. But outside mm-hmm. of that, how they were presenting him as a face was not working for me and of course the Miz was first challenge he backhanded Miz tooth out I remember that very vividly I was like damn he came in here with a <laughs> with a mission and then I was like yeah that's cool but AJ Styles took off for me as soon as he turned heel when it was beat up John Cena new level that's to me that's still, that's still the best thing he's done in his entire Absolutely. run well I'm gonna go, just I'm gonna go like- grocery shopping I need some eggs need some bacon then I think I'm gonna beat up John Cena Beat up John Cena. That's amazing. <laughs> That's still one of my favorite things I just, ever. I remember like the the one promo he cut. Like I think it might have been before the SummerSlam match. He said, "John, you keep coming out here, and every time you come out here, we're gonna beat you up." I was like, so "This good. is fucking great." And then they went out and did it. It was incredible. I was like, oh, "I I love I this." Was so happy with that. So yes. Because Gallows and Anderson were just like lost until Styles Absolutely. got there, and he revitalized them. Because and I met those guys, good brothers, good brothers they were, good brothers, good uh, brothers. Yes, I, I no, yeah, that, those are my top two SummerSlam moments. Um, there's there's more. SummerSlam is just such a cool event. I'm I'm gonna um, definitely Kurt Angle versus Rey Mysterio. Now it's still good. the best opening match I've ever seen at a pay per view. They let those two go for 20 minutes and said, just go like they go on the indies. And those two put on a show. Yeah, I I, w- I would go back. I think next week I'm going to come back with with a with a real like banger of a SummerSlam memory. Because I, I couldn't think off the top of my head, but I'm going to go back because, you know, every time when uh when a premium live event got to got to <laughs> throw it in there. premium live event is coming up. They always put it on Peacock. They're like, oh yeah, go yeah. watch eighteen thousand hours of the last fifty-two decades. Like, oh, okay, cool. And truthfully, that's what I do on like Sundays. Like, I'll just I'll be cleaning up my apartment. I'll just turn on like the best of SummerSlam. Like, oh, I got si- I got six hours to leave this on mute while I clean yeah, up. I mean, and if you're BA, you just close your eyes because you were there, even if you were sperm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember. It. I can remember the smell in the audience. Like, I remember the smell of the cheer because I was almost left there as a child. <laughs> like, what? Where did this come from? But yes, it, I, that's what I might do. I'm gonna take a look at some of the, some of the best 
Uh, an- another good SummerSlam moment. Brock Lesnar destroying Super Cena. Uh, which time? Yeah, they tell me what, what happened. To be more specific. So this is the killed him lots of times. This is like after Brock makes his comeback at Mania. Mm-hmm. When he first makes his comeback after the UFC, oh, shit, with the, uh, he still has the Jimmy yep, John shorts with the on. Jimmy John. <laughs> yep. The day after Mania, everybody's cheering for Brock, and John's in the ring like, "Well, if you're here, come on out." And Brock's like, "Well, I'm here, motherfucker." And they just they draw that out to SummerSlam, and then Brock beats the shit out of him, and it's just it's insane. Yeah, that kind of happened continuously. That's why I don't remember it vividly because I'm like. It seemed like every time he came back, they just abused John. They're like, that's when John just was like, "Oh, he's just losing. This, that's it now. He just loses. Yeah. That's what he yeah, does." I'm, I'm taking you yeah. to L's. I mean, shit. Last year, Roman beat the shit out of him at SummerSlam and talked you through it like he was the narrator. Oh, smash! Come on, John. You ain't. Coming. Hey, Hollywood, don't send him back here. WWE is mine. I was like, that oh, was shit. a that was a fun time. I, I did enjoy that as well. He might actually be a shareholder. <laughs> Uh, he's he's just saying Hollywood in general. Like he, I don't know, who, Mr. Ho- hey, Mr. Hollywood, <laughs> who is that? Don't you send this motherfucker back here? It's my house. Is this, does somebody actually live in the Hollywood sign? Right. Just beating his ass. <laughs> you, you might have been talking to the Rock. See, oh, long term story. Oh. Hey, oh. AEW, take that. <laughs> Then they changed Roman's music. Because <laughs> you didn't know that was Roman's music back in 1992 when he was just a, a seed in his daddy's balls. And uh, B.A. Oh, no, I was like, B.A. was right there. He was slapping <laughs> fire, <laughs> testicle to testicle because they had to get a prostate exam at the same time. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah, I, that's the best on term booking. I could just see Roman just sitting in his chair. He's like, you know, it's funny. Dwayne made fun of that in, in his TV show. That actually happened when I was trying to get him to acknowledge me as a child. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> and he did. <laughs> B.A. was like, I was there. I was right there on the couch. <laughs> I was sitting next to Alpha and Seeker. <laughs> Why is that so funny? <laughs> Because B.A.'s, like, historic knowledge is like, just he was insane. There. I'm telling you, he, like, he literally was at every pay-per-view ever. He just was a traveling roadie. He's lived such a life. You don't even know. <laughs> Before it was... Like, I thought I was a nerd with my, like, my knowledge of the history of this shit. And then I'm at B.A., I was like, huh, oh, I've, I've been right. Right. It's like, before he was black IRS, <laughs> he was just the road dog. <laughs> the real road dog. <laughs> Oh my god. B.A. The historian. <laughs> he is a wrestling historian. We're going to ask him a lot of questions next week. But um, other than that, I think I, I that's pretty much all I got. You got something else for me? No, no, no. I, I'm i good. I'm good. I'm great. Oh, hey, hey. Another SummerSlam memory. Um, Shane McMahon and Vince McMahon team up against Shawn Michael. And God. Wow. <laughs> that happened. Shane and Vince spent a whole four to five weeks cutting promos against God. Wow. And they said, Sean, it's going to be you and God versus me and Shane at SummerSlam. That, yeah, that's that not going to be one of the, the several hours of wrestling that I go back to. But if you ask VA... <laughs> he don't know exactly the year. He was like, I remember that. He was like, I had several things to do. God told me. Hold on. Oh, excuse me. I, I apologize. This happened at Backlash, but oh. I thought about it because of that weird Titus promo. Ah, uh, so yeah, BA would have corrected us. He would have known. He was like, no. Y- y'all, he definitely he was like, God was busy that day. He was in church. But before that, he was, he, he was definitely in the building. He, he flickered the lights a little bit. I was like, oh, okay. Well, you, you got me there. But um other than that ladies and gentlemen that has been this week's episode of let me book the territory a dub let them know where the people can find you and what you got going on all right guys so every tuesday let me book the territory excuse, excuse me every tuesday <laughs> embrace the turn up we out here me and john 
Um, and every other Monday, you can find me and the homie Tare at Nah Fam, your new favorite sports debate show. We're going to toss a little hip hop in there. I'm going to challenge him on some wrestling takes too. New episode coming this Monday. Also, I will be at a couple of wrestling events this weekend. If you're looking for your boy, I will be at the Circle Six Wrestling Event in Detroit. I will be hanging out with some of the wrestlers. I will be in the second row. Um, Josh Alexander, the Impact World Champion, is going to be there. Shout to the homie Otis Koger. He's going to be there. The Rascals are going to be there. Um, lots, lot, lots of lots of good wrestling. And then, if you're in Saginaw, I'll be on the video production crew of the UCW event that is coming to pay per view. Rounds. Ace Austin from Impact is going to be there, and a few other guys. I, I'm working, guys. I, I officially work in the industry now. Oh, you, you're. Your huh. industry man number number one number two. Eh, eh. When it comes to the wrestling industry, I, I'm industry man number one of, of the group. But number one of Jay yeah. says BA is a wrestler. You just don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not going to football practice. He's definitely going to independent oh, yeah, wrestling absolutely. matches. And, you know, yeah. J Mo if you, owns. If you guys are looking for me, of, like remember that one time I was there because I wrestled. It's like no, you didn't, J Mo. Okay, maybe I did. <laughs> it's just, it's, you know, same difference. But other than that, guys, if you're looking for me on my socials, ADUB1220 on everything. Holla at me. We can argue wrestling. We can argue hip-hop. We can argue sports. I'm down for all of that. And I'm getting these jokes off. And apparently I'm liking pictures of chicks 10 years younger than me at all times. Wowzers. Well, at least they're legal. So we'll, we'll, we'll let you live. Um, and guys... It is I, your tribal beef, your American cream, your macho madness. E-Ray, the quasi-bad guy, the Diet Coke of evil. Um, when not listening to Let Me Book the Territory, um, you can also catch me at An Honorable Ruckus uh, podcast every Saturday. You can catch me um, at Binge Flicks and Chill with all of our episodes are up for the first season, season one out now. Uh, 13 episodes, great, great content uh, for your movie reviews and just hilarious conversations. Also, if you want to support, go buy you a shirt. The the Bench Flicks merch is out now. It's beautiful. It's at www.inaudibleruckus.com uh, slash forward slash binge dash and dash chill. Great. Good tanks for your muscles. You got sweet teas for your titties. That's what I said. Um, also, if you want to look at me on Instagram, looking very out of breath because I'm I'm your tribal beef here, Roman Games. I'm out here working all the time, getting swole for the for the nine nine two thousands. Just just getting reparations for the muscles I needed to have when I was a child. Uh, you can find me at e underscore r a y underscore the bad guy on the Instagrams, or you can catch me on the Twitters. Uh, looking at random filth and having hilarious Twitter commentary about wrestling uh, at E underscore R-A-Y, the hipster. Uh, other than that, guys, that's all we have. B.A. and J-Mo will be back for our other other half. But until then, you know, you got to enjoy the mega powers exploding <laughs> all over your body. And that's I thought we it. I thought we were eroding, eroding, exploding, uh, cajoling, Imploding, whatever, it, it, cajoling. whatever we want to do, we gonna do it. And guess what? Ba is gonna know because he was there, <laughs> like he's he always. There. There. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, remember until next time, wrestling is everything, and everything is wrestling. And when you see us out, just hit us with that too sweet, too sweet and we are out. See me. <laughs>